don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So today it's raining cats and dogs outside. It's windy, it's drab, it's dreary. Um, so I thought I would, um, since I've got about a spare hour or so, I thought I would have another play in my um, Valley Valley volume of the Dolls book. So this is going to be page number five. I've gone through my ephemera collection again and I've pulled out some bits and pieces that I think I want to use in this page. So this is going to be a fairly kind of cheerful page, hopefully in the end, with a little bit of distress and a bit of grunge thrown in. I wanted to include um, some graphical elements, so I've actually got some numbers, um, but I've also got, I love that, just found it tucked down at the bottom of one of the boxes, uh, this side up, and it's really cute. Um, I've got from the Chip Words, I think that's what they're called, um, Love This Life and Heart and Soul. I've got some more of the botanical die cuts from the, from the botanic um, ephemera collection from Tim Holtz, so this is practically all I've got left now, so I'm going to use up some of those. Um, he says, those as well, two butterflies. I'm choosing these ladies today, only because they're, both, they're all ladies and they're all wearing hats. That's my one thing about this one. Um, and I've also got this um, piece of ephemera. I'm not sure where it came from, don't think it's Tim Holtz. Um, this could have come from anywhere. And it's got birdies on it. So we've got flowers, we've got butterflies, flora and fauna. There we go. So I think that's what we're going to do today with those. Now then, for colour wise, I've pulled out from my Dina Wakeley collection, I've got evergreen and lime. I've got magenta and blushing, so that's greens and pinks, but also I've brought out Sedona and tangerine for the background. But what I've also got is, now I've got this set of gouache paints. And now Ian bought me these for my birthday last year. Um, I haven't, I think I've only opened the box and had a look at them. Now, a couple of them have leaked, but that's just the nature of the beast because of the tubes. Um, they were like this when they were purchased. I think I've opened one or two. May have used them maybe once, not sure. So I'm going to introduce some gouache into it as well. Now, the difference between gouache and watercolours um, are these are, or the gouache are opaque. Watercolours are translucent, gouache are opaque. That's the plan, or that's the hope, anyway, that these are going to be as opaque as they should be. I'm also going to be using my two new stencils for January. So there's the Helianthus, which is available now to purchase on the website. Shameful plug, I know. And the particles, again, shameful plug, available to purchase on the website now. Okay, with that out of the way, onto the book. Now, the reason it's already orange is because I used these two pages as a mop-up from one of my previous pages. I think it was this one. Um, so, just to prove that I do actually save my paints or use them from, um, for mop-ups. So I get rid of those paints. I don't really need to use them. Oh, so they can go out of the way. Create a bit more space on my desktop. Bring those paints over there. I think I'm ready to go. So what I want to do is I've got some water here in my little paint pot. Grab a brush. I should have brought the brushes a bit closer. They're right at the other side of my desk. Miles away, practically in a different city. So, pen pot, brush pot, paint, water, stencils, ephemera. Nothing left to do but to actually get cracking. So what I want to do is I want to glue down some bits of ephemera first of all in the background. So I'm going to use the birdies up there first. And then we're going to intersperse that with a little bit of the wordage because she's then going to go and stand around about there like her. I know I tend to place these characters where um, you know in the same kind of positions 
but that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. So I want to also place that there. So it looks like there, well, she's actually sitting on that one. I could do with one more piece, couldn't I? What we got here. So this is one that was just lying from lying down or lying down, laying on my worktop. So let's see if we can do that and see if we can get them to sit. Look at that. Oh, actually, I think I prefer it that way around. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that position there and then I can start layering, before I glue those down, I can start layering some of that those botanical elements behind the two or behind all the ladies. So before we get too carried away, because that's exactly what's going to end up happening, let's grab some glue. Oh dear, I'm having one of those days today. I've been hunched over my computer yesterday for so long um, trying to do my year-end accounts that I've actually strained my shoulders, which is not good, not good at all, because the end of January is when we have to submit our accounts for the previous year. So I need to get them ready. Okay, so let's just glue these bits down first of all. See. in the background. So last night while I was, um, well I went to bed about 10ish last night, about 10 o'clock last night and couldn't sleep. Um, everybody around me was snoring. When I say everybody I mean Ian and Mr Bentley. Um, so I ended up switching on um, my iPad, I put my headphones in obviously because I couldn't sleep, the, the pain in my shoulders was just keeping me awake um, and I watched the um, 2020 release for Stampers Anonymous with Tim Holtz which was the Facebook Live that he did but it was on his YouTube channel um, so pretty excited for some of the new stamp sets that are coming out um, I think there was one stamp set for January, one or two in February, and maybe one in March that I was particularly interested in. Um, and then after I'd watched that, because I still couldn't sleep, um, I went on to watch the Ideology release. Uh, and I think with the ideology release, it was, yeah, I want that, want that, want that, want that, want that. I think it was nearly everything. Uh, particularly the new, um, like, steampunky baseboards and layers that he's got on offer. Um, so I think all that's available after creativation. So that's going to be fun. Somebody's not going to have any money. Me because I'll have spent it all on Tim Holt's stuff. So let's do that there. Relics and Curiosities autographs. We did say about there, didn't we? Yeah, it's not too high. Let's just pull that down a little bit. Are we going to go about there? Is that better? Should have actually done that, shouldn't I? I should have put something just there behind her. Perhaps though this side up can go there under her elbow. <laughs> yes, like that. I'll we'll have to add that later. Um, and then this piece, let's just audition them again. So bums about there. Oh, lovely. And then that one can go about there. Ooh, let's just see who that was. Messages galore today. Is it important? Not for me. Right. Let's put that down one side. Let's 
very unprofessional of me not putting it on silent. I do apologise for that little interruption. Okay, so I'm going to stick that down towards the top, but just leave a little bit of a gap. You can see, so there's just a little bit of a step there. And then we need to um, just I think just like that look. I think that's going to work. I'll do it just about there, in line. Because it's only a small one, just give it a bit of a rub with my finger, and then we'll just drop it just there. I think that was exactly where we said this side up like that like that lots okay so got that there so now i want to introduce some botanical elements so some of the fluors but before we do that i need to let the glue dry a bit on there because i want to just add some color washes with some paints just over the top of that just to kind of get it to blend in a little bit so i'm going to give that five ten minutes and then i will be right back but for you it's a matter of seconds so mr bentley's just walked in with a teddy squeaking it as soon as i started recording he just dropped it and started looking at me what dopey dog right okay so we're dry enough i think to add a little bit of colour into the background so I'm going to use the line first of all now I do appreciate that I've already got orange in the background there so I'm just going to put a little bit until my Dina Wakely paints are starting to run out now do they have been heavily used all right so just wet the brush a little bit that's it just to get it flowing and then I'm going to just bring that green so it kind of blends nicely and just knocks that orange back a little bit but at the same time Ian's here as well by the way that's what the heavy side you saw you just Good heard afternoon, everyone. <laughs> he's trying to do something on the computer and it's fighting him right, well, I'm not going too heavy with the green at this side, I want the pink of that to stay where it is, but I'm just going to drag the brush over the top just so it kind of looks a little bit like paint that's faded. Tad more water, and then we'll start on this side. And again, as you can see, I'm only doing the paint in um, vertical brush strokes, I'm not going horizontally. So a little bit more paint, a little bit more water. It's just toning down that orange. Which is a nice colour anyway. But it's not the primary colour that I want into the background. The orange will still show through. But that's okay. Because I will be using some more orange a little bit later and then we'll just get a little bit of that green into the crook of the page just so there's a little bit of continuation across from one to the other touch of water last bit of green So happy with that, get rid of that, there's not enough really there to work with it or add to another page anywhere, that's fine, so we'll get that dried and then I'll be back. Okay so I just wet my whistle, okay so next up I've got my Helianthus 
stencil. That's the new one and I've just clipped it to the top of the page just to hold it not steady but just just to hold it there for the minute or two and I've got now my Dina Wakely Sedona which is a nice kind of reddish brown so it's mostly red with a hint of kind of brown to it and I'm just going to pick some of that paint up on a sponge and I'm going to go around and just stencil in those darker leaves I probably won't be able to get all the way into that piece there that's in the crease but that's okay and then just go around there I'm not going to bother down there because that's going to be hidden so that's just about it there and then I'll just add a little bit kind of like to on the tips like so get a teensy winsy winsy more schmidge and then load the sponge back up this time I'm going to go just bit heavier around the middle so just around there if I get a heavier line I can just blend it out a little bit like so Now we've got that, get rid of that red on that wet wipe. I'm not going to ditch the wet wipe and now I'm just going to, leaving that stencil in place, I'm just going to quickly waft over my heat gun. I'm bearing in mind that the mylar on the stencil is heat resistant but we don't want to go too heavy with it, just a little because that's stayed in place and then this time I'm going to grab the ochre gouache add some of that down onto my mat and then this time with another sponge I'm going to load the gouache up and then go back over the top just on those main petals just leaving a hint of that red Sedona sounds like somewhere in Florida Sedona mm. I think actually it's a place, Sedona is it? California? Answers below please. Yeah, I don't know whether it's that, Sedona Park seems to ring a bell. I don't know whether I've just invented somewhere in the States or whether that's real. Bearing in mind my ladies are going to be sat here anyway, so... Just add a touch. I think... 
just lift that up. Yeah, I've got that lovely kind of um, image there. And then what I'm going to do is just using that Sedona again, this time I've got a little bit of black. I'm going to put a tiny, tiny touch of it. Shake it up first because you know what's going to happen. A little touch of black. And just a little bit more of that Sedona. And using the same sponge. I'm going to go through the middle. Now I don't mind if I get a little bit around that edge. It'll just help just to kind of outline it a little bit. Give it some dimension. Take that off. Yeah. Happy with that. I know I've got a little bit of a splodge there, but that doesn't matter. You've got to bear in mind that it is going to get um, some other bits over the top of that in a little while. Okay, so I need to clean this up, get rid of that, get that dry, and then when it's all done as in dry and cleaned, I'll be back. Okay, so that's dry. So now it's time to add in a little bit of that pink, which is what we said we were going to do. So, <clears throat> so to balance it out a little bit, I'm going to add um, using the, the particle stencil. You can see I've already used some pink with this. Um, and we're going to use the blush in, which is a kind of more of an antique pink than a bright pink, which is just perfect for what we want to do. So we'll do that. And then let's have a look. Do I need to cut up another sponge? Probably. I've got one already there. So we'll load up some of that pink, which isn't quite as opaque as it should be, but I don't have a nice antique kind of pink in um, in the gouache so I've got a, a deep rose mm, mm, maybe <laughs> maybe in a little while so I'm going to do some little pink circles now because there's some orange and green in the background there may be a little bit of um, I won't say clash because there won't be and then down here. Bring that down towards the bottom. And a little bit up there where she's going to be standing, because we know she's going to be standing about there. And then while we're there, I'm going to just bring in about this side, so there's a balance between the two. And we'll add some of those little dotty circles where their feet are going to be. Because they've got little dangly feet hanging over the edge. And then just at the top there. And that can go off the page a little bit. Okay, so we've got that, and I think while I still can, what have I got? Yeah, I've still got that little ochre one on this side, so I'm just going to grab um, some of that ochre gouache that we used. Drop a little bit on there because I want to shadow that look a little bit 
over here. Actually, what I might do is use that stencil and just use a little bit of those petal shapes. Going really heavy. Yeah, it just kind of adds a little bit of mirroring from one side to the other. And then well, I've still got a little bit of pink left on that. Because that will go a little bit orangey with the pink. Okay, again, get it dried off, and then I'm going to be ready to start adding some of the other ephemera. Okay, so the background colours are pretty dry now. So what I want to do is just add in um, some of these bits of ephemera, just to add a tad of colour in there. So I think I'm going to swap those two around. Took this behind her. Just auditioning kind of where I want them on the page at the moment. Auditioning? Yeah, it's when you place something down on the page and you're not sure whether it's the right place for it, you put it down without the glue first mm -hmm. and then if you're not happy with its position you can move it without too much problem. So it's kind of like audition its position. Oh, see. Yes. Like auditioning for a play. Yes. I'll so something today. <laughs> so I think maybe just... I'm conscious of the page corner there, so I might just move her up a little bit. And just have that coming over the edge, so from behind her, and then that's going to be about the right position, I think. So, all I'm going to do is just add some glue to the backs of these while they're still in place. Are you going to try and take him out in the rain? I am indeed. Oh, good luck. But before it dries and grabs hold, I'm just going to keep bringing her in just to make sure I'm covering up the edge. Yeah, so we're losing the, the stem, so she's going to be hidden behind. So what I could do, theoretically, is... Well, I've just taken a note of it, it's just above that seven there. So I'll quickly just add some glue to that. And I've just noticed that the battery is out to go on my camera. So I may just have to suspend for a minute or two until there's enough juice left in to carry on. Okay, I think what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and glue that one down and those two pieces in position while the camera's charging back up again. You know that's where they're going to be. So um, I'll be back when they're glued into position just like that. Okay, so they're all glued down. Um, as you can see, I've not, <laughs> I've not stuck the others down just yet. 
So just in time, or just enough juice in the camera to be able to stick down my ladies. So up and around. And then flip her over and position her just there. Like so. So she's not going to go anywhere now. And then we've got Doreen and Ida. This one's Hillary. Then just go around, add in the glue, oh, blobs on the feet. And then we can position with their arm. Oh, I'll just want to kick her over a bit that side, just so there's a little hint of pink showing through there. Liking that nice, bright, kind of jolly colours, just exactly what the doctor ordered on a day like today. Like I said, it is really, really um, raining quite hard and it's windy out there. So I anticipate they're going to be back quite soon. Right. Okay, so looking at the page, um, there's too much green up here, it needs something else. Hence the reason for the other butterfly. Now I have gone round it already with some uh, vintage photo distress archival just to get rid of some of those white um, edges because the die cutting is not brilliant on these. Um, on that one I think it's going to be too big to add up there or up there. It's just a little bit too big so that's not going to make it into this page I'm afraid. Not all pieces will do. Um, and then I'm just going to add the glue. And like I said, there was too much green up here and it needed a little bit, a little balance of orange, which is why when we put the butterfly in there, that's going to add a little bit more balance to the page. Now we've still got to add um, our two little quote chips. Those two are the pieces that aren't going to make it. Everything else in the background I'm happy with. Happy with her, happy with those two. And then I've just got my two little quote chips to add which is love this life and heart and soul but I want to grunge them up just a teeny weeny. So I'm just going to go around the edge just with that Distress Archival just to knock the whiteness back a teeny amount and this sponge I think is about to get thrown away it's coming to the end of its life that's why it's throwing bits everywhere Just to dirty it up a little bit, and then I'm going to add the glue to the back, and that's going to go to at the top up here. Doesn't matter if you get a little bit of glue squidging out because it does dry clear. And I will go back over this page when it's all dry. To get rid of the shine, it's just my camera's about to, like I said, only got enough juice in it just to be able to get those stuck down. And these stuck down. Just 
just looking at the camera screen just to see whether or not it told me how long I've got left. And I'm going to just add that bit just coming off her side there. Have I got that straight? It's about as straight as I can manage. That should do. Okay, so before I do anything else, and I'm going to have to let that dry, let those grab, and then I'll be back. That's going to cause me problems, I know it is. Right, I'll be back when they're dry. Okay, so while I was waiting for the camera to recharge, I actually did go over the top with the white gesso, which you've seen me do 101,000 times already. So all I did was use the Art Basics clear gesso from uh, Prima Marketing. Just gave the, the die cuts, the pepper dolls and the flowers and the butterfly and Tim's um, word chips or quote chips, whatever, um, one coat of the clear gesso and then dried it with the heat gun, which got rid of the shine. There you go, no shine on the page at all. So what I wanna do now just to finish off is just add the obligatory splatters. So a little bit of white paint. I've got some water. And I'm just going to mix up a fairly kind of loose smattering of white paint. And then I'm just going to put my finger over the girl. And then just flip that round. A bit more water. And then just put a few little white splatters and then just some at the top. Just putting my hand in the way just to stop any from really getting on the faces. I don't mind getting on the clothes because that helps to kind of blend it in a little more but it just adds a little bit of extra dimension, a bit of wistfulness if you like, almost like there's dust motes floating around in the air, caught by the camera, as that was, the um, little snapshot was taken. So I just need to get rid of that. And I always end up getting white splatters everywhere, all over. Okay, let's get that dried off. Okay, I think that's it. I'm not gonna add anything else to this. I'm not even gonna bother grounding her feet there or theirs because I think because you've got that kind of end of that piece there, it kind of does it naturally. It just looks like she's stood at the bottom of this big flower display and they're sat on a bench after walking around this, you know, massive garden or floral display. Um, and their feet are killing them, so they're having a five minute break. So <laughs> that's pretty much it, I think, for that page. Like it. So all I have to do is just to sign it at the bottom and date it with whatever date it is today. And it's the, oh, the 14th, almost halfway through January, all ready. And that's it. So that is page five in my volume of the dolls. So I hope you enjoyed watching me do that. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up, share the video with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. Look, I've already started tidying up before I've even said goodbye. It's all from me for now. I'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now.
I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you, these videos would not be possible. Thank you.